tonight, Jameson launched a new film concept, the Jameson Cult Film Club. Now, throughout the year, screenings will take place in non-cinema locations. Kicking off the series tonight, we're on the green carpet for The Usual Suspects with the brilliant Kevin Spacey. Uh, you know, it's hard, it's hard to know why certain movies seem to stand the test of time. Um, I can only tell you that for those of us who were a part of it, uh, to work with Brian Singer, who at that point, this was his second film. Uh, Chris McQuarrie, that was their second film together, although they'd been making movies since they were in high school together. They were just an extraordinary team, and they had such a vision for how to take a kind of genre, which was sort of the noir genre and sort of flip it and make it modern and make it I mean you know it was an unlikely cast of of actors that came together um, and yet somehow it still seems to be the movie that people stop me on the street and talk about and and you know I'm sure there'll be people here tonight who haven't seen it yet I get twitters from people sometimes oh my god I just saw that movie for the first time um, and, I, and I love the fact that it's one of those films that seems to stick around for a while can you remember what you first thought when you read the script yeah, it confused the hell out of me. Uh, I had to read it twice. Um, and then I sort of, sort, of, sort of the nickel dropped. But I remember when we screened it for the actors, there was this hysterical moment where Gabriel Byrne wandered up to Brian and said, and they started having this sort of discussion, which went out into the parking lot at Universal Studios. And it turned out that Brian had so successfully convinced every actor that they were Kaiser Soze... Gabriel was quite pissed that he didn't turn out to be <laughs> Economically, when times are hard, the arts and film are always the always the first ones to get cuts and funding. How important do you think film festivals are are, are are in bringing smaller films to wider audiences? Well, I think that anything we can do to uh, encourage our politicians, encourage philanthropists, encourage corporations to understand that arts and culture are not a luxury item. They're a necessity in our lives. They are the magic of our experience. And countries may go to war, but it's culture that unites us. And we have to do everything we can to convince as many people as possible that it's hugely important to support the arts because it's also economically viable. The creative industries bring a lot of economy to all of the businesses that surround a cultural center. And whether that's an opera house or a theater or a movie house or a comedy club, wherever people gather, got to eat, got to take a taxi, got to buy a newspaper, got to, you know, fly in. So there are economic arguments to make to governments. Uh, and while we understand and respect that cuts have to be made, then what they've got to do as a way to balance that and bridge that gap for companies that will be hurt is they've got to change the tax laws. If you incentivize philanthropists like we do in the United States, a flood of money will come into arts and culture. So we just got to keep beating the drum.